Welcome to Write With Love. I'm your host, Sarah Williams, best-selling author, speaker, and creative entrepreneur. Each week, I chat to passionate and inspiring authors about their journey in creative writing. Some are traditionally published, some do it themselves. Everyone's journey is different, and everyone has something interesting to say. We all love love and love what we do. Today's show is brought to you by our amazing fans and supporters on Patreon. If you'd like to help support the show and get some awesome bonus episodes, go to patreon.com forward slash Sarah Williams author to learn more. Now here's today's show. G'day and welcome to Write With Love. Today on the show, I'm chatting to Janet Elizabeth Henderson. Thanks for joining me today. Hi, it's really good to be here. Yeah, it's great to talk to you. Scottish accent, but you live in New Zealand. Go figure. I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah, we've been here 15 years. And uh, yeah, before that, we were in England and my husband's Dutch. So we lived in Holland for a little bit. So we've been all over the place. Wow, that's awesome. So um, we were just chatting that if if we can't understand you, <laughs> well, you can't understand me, we might have to repeat. Yeah, actually, can't wait. We need subtitles. <laughs> yeah, I can do a transcript. Yeah. We can make this work. <laughs> I have to. <laughs> so I'd love if you can start by uh, telling us about yourself and your writing journey so far. Um, my writing journey. I don't know about my writing journey, but I've always told stories. I, I have voices in my head. You have voices in your head? Uh, yes, yes, definitely. Right, okay. And they're really annoying. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Yeah. Like two o'clock in the morning and the voices are talking to you. Normally they're having arguments. I don't know why, right? Mm -hmm. So it was either um, check myself into a local institute, an institution, <laughs> or, or start writing books. That's, that's how that's I got here. Yep. <laughs> so how long have you been writing? Is this something you've been doing as a career for a long time? Or? Um, I've been writing full time since about 2012. Mm -hmm. uh, before that, I spent eight years writing a crime novel. I, I don't know what I was doing, put it this way. Right? <laughs> I, was, I was all over the place. But I, I had an Australian agent for that, which was quite funny. And when, after eight years of trying to get it finished and eventually given to it to her, I decided I didn't want to write crime. I wanted to write romance because I was frightening myself and I was having nightmares. <laughs> oh, nice. So, so I, um, I swapped to romance and she didn't know what to do with a romance author. So it was bye-bye agent. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But yeah, I've always, I've always written, um, yeah, it's just it's just part of my life. I've always told stories. I used to share a bedroom with my two younger sisters and I'd tell them stories every night, which they loved because it meant that I wasn't singing ABBA songs to them, which was my other option. <laughs> We're very close. Yes, <laughs> Fantastic. So you started writing romance and, and you went straight into self-publishing? Uh, no, not straight. Um, I sent a book, my first romance I wrote, my, my youngest daughter was born with um, a deformed foot mm -hmm. and she was in pain every night. So uh, I was up every night for about a year and a half. I, I didn't sleep, I did night shift. Mm -hmm. I would just walk her till she, till she dozed and she'd sleep for like 20 minutes and then she'd, get, she'd be in pain again. Mm -hmm. So I read a lot, obviously, to to kind of see me through and I was reading lighter and lighter and lighter books and I, I ran out of stuff to read this was kind of pre-Kindle days and I thought oh stuff it I'll just write a couple of comedies so I did I started writing comedy and the first one I wrote I sent to um the, was one the agent didn't want and I sent it to Mills and Boons mm -hmm. to see if they wanted it I had never read a Mills and Boons <laughs> so um I I didn't have a clue if this was if this was something they wanted. I don't know what I was doing. Just I was sleep deprived. Okay, um, yeah, I sent it to them and they liked it, so that was lovely. And they kept it for two years and they lost it three times and the editor changed four times and it was a disaster. And I was at a, by this time I joined Writers of Romance Writers of New Zealand, and um, I was at a meeting and Chris Pearson and um, Diana, I can't remember her writing name. 
<laughs> Fraser, Diana Fraser, sorry, Diana, um, were there and they, they just started self publishing and they were like, look, just self publish. Cause I was on a bit of a deadline as well, because I had, um, I had to go back to work and uh, that meant teaching secondary school and I would rather stick a fork in my eyeball than go back to teaching secondary school. So I had to make some money from writing. So I decided to self-publish it, took off, did really well, and um, I just carried on self-publishing. Fantastic. Cool. The so this was, this was romantic comedy? Yes. Excellent. Yeah. And was it your... I didn't in... actually... Yeah? Sorry, I, I didn't actually know I was writing comedy until the reviews for the first two books came back and they were like, this is really, really funny. So I had to sit down and look at them and think, where? Because <laughs> I was just being me, you know? So, um, but since then I've kind of, I've honed it. I know when I'm being funny now. So. <laughs> you're, you're funny on purpose Generally, now. generally. <laughs> you know? yeah. Oh, that, that's oh. awesome. So let's talk about these romantic comedies. Um, is this a series of books or are they all standalones? They're all standalones within a series. Hmm. <laughs> and the series is called because I'm not going to get it right. <laughs> yeah, no, really, you should say it. Say it. I want to hear it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was practicing before. In, in the Terry. <laughs> that is so wrong. I know it's so wrong. <laughs> <laughs> just call them the Scottish books. The Scottish, the Scottish books. books. Yeah, we love it. So, so tell us about your Scottish books. <laughs> yeah, they're contemporary romances set in a small town in Scotland. That's pretty much all it is. And I was, you know, those old Western movies, the the stranger comes to town. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Well, I was fascinated by this whole Western concept. The stranger comes to town and disrupts everything and. Uh, well, I wanted to write my own westerns, but I know nothing about America. So I set it all in a small town, contemporary small town in Scotland. But that is basically the premise for every book, A Stranger Comes to Town. <laughs> nice. There's more to it than that. Like, these, <laughs> books, these books are 90,000 words each. There's a story in there. And there's a secondary romance in each book as well. And um, yeah. So and and you do your own covers as well. Yes. Yes, I did. Because I studied fine art. So, um, and I was an art teacher for a long time. So I automatically assume that I know better than anybody else when it comes to my covers. <laughs> and that makes me a complete control freak. Um, so I don't want anybody to touch them. <laughs> <laughs> That's but, so I learned how to do it because I'm a control freak. But they are, they're great covers. Do you have any there that you can show us? <laughs> <laughs> you you no. got something small, don't you? <laughs> Wait, it was so well for you. Yeah, that was goody yep. two shoes with the tartan shoes. Goody two shoes oh, with tartan shoes, which, one, which you've got a tartan shoe, and I'd like you to show me the tartan shoe again. Yes, yes. I, I love my tartan shoes. See, I love it. I'm going to be shoes. wearing these. I'm going to be wearing these tartan shoes. Yeah, but I've been redoing the covers recently to update them, so. Mm. Even the pictures that I've got are, yeah, yeah. I'm well, so well prepared for this, Sarah. Oh, no, Thank it's, you it's all good. I, I love putting people <laughs> on the spot. <laughs> it makes, it makes it so funny. <laughs> excellent. <laughs> so we've got the um, the the Scottish series, which, all right, excellent. Let's let's move on to your other um, series of books. Red Zone was your latest release, and you do yes. have a copy of that. Yes, I do, but I didn't do the cover. <laughs> <laughs> didn't do the cover. It's, it's very different from your I, other ones. <laughs> it doesn't do this cover. Excellent. So it's tell upset. tell us about your road to publication on this one because it was you we traditionally published for it. Yes, it tell is. us why yes. and and how that kind of worked for you. <clears throat> okay, as, as we've already pointed out, I'm Scottish mm -hmm. and I'm cheap, and I was looking for ways to increase my readership that doesn't cost me any money. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So I thought, what better way to do that than to have a traditionally published book and to tap into all of the publisher's readers mm -hmm. and um, it wouldn't cost me anything except writing a book. That was, that was my reasoning behind going to this show. So I signed with another agent, beautiful Nalini Akko Clar, who's got a name that's almost as unpronounceable as my inventory scene. <laughs> and, um, yeah, and she 
she, at the time I, I, I was between romantic comedies. I didn't have anything to show her romance wise. Mm. So, but I said, I've got this kind of paranormal, kind of science fiction, kind of action adventure. Don't actually know what it is. It's set in the future. If you, I've been writing it for myself. Because Nalini Singh wasn't writing fast enough for me. I thought yeah. I'd write my own version of Nalini Singh's book, right? Oh, excellent. Um, yeah. So, uh, so I sent this to my agent, Nalini, and she said, okay, this is good. Let's see if we can sell that. So that's how this came about. I had no intention of publishing it. And, um, and now it's out there and there's another one coming in October. Yeah. So, oh my gosh. Yeah. Well, that's cool. So you got a two book deal. Yeah, for this. Yeah, yeah. which yeah. is good. So tell us about Red Zone. What's the, um, you know, give us the product description idea. Like I said, all right. Okay. I love Nalini Singh's Side Changeling book, yeah. right? Yeah. And I love Christine Payne's <coughs> Ghost Walker books. Mm -hmm. Have you read the Ghost Walker books? I haven't, no. Oh, you've got to read the Ghost Walker books. They're <laughs> awesome. Uh, she's such a good writer. But you've got to read the books. Excellent. Anyway, I, I'd never read Paranormal or anything like that before. But I was at the Romance Writers of New Zealand conference in 2013. Mm -hmm. And I met this woman in the toilet, as you do. And I introduced myself, as you do, right? And I said to her, what do you write? And she said, oh, paranormal romance. And I said to her, oh, I, I hear there's not much, you know, market for that right now. Is it, are you struggling? And she was like, no, no, I'm doing okay. And we had a nice conversation, got out the toilet and discovered that was Nalini Singh, who's like multiple New York Times bestselling author. And I'm asking her if she's struggling. I've no <laughs> idea who she is. So I felt really bad about this. So I went away and I read her first Sci Changeling book. And I was like, oh, this is awesome. And that got me into those and got me into Ghost Walkers. Mm. But neither one of them write fast enough for me, right? And it was driving me nuts, you know? Um, so my own ideas were coming to my head, basically. It was just like, yeah. And the next thing I know, I'm writing a book 100 years in the future with genetically modified soldiers that have been asleep for 100 years and wake up in a new, a new world. And the half the world is obsessed with getting implanted tech so they can speak to their fridge or their TV or whatever without using their computer or their phone. And the other half of the world doesn't want implanted tech. And, mm. and this experimental bomb, bomb had gone off and caused um, a cloud of red um, poisonous gas to sit over the border of Mexico and, and uh, America. And that actually... They built a wall to keep it out. And I just want to say, I built my wall before Trump. Okay, that's <laughs> nothing to do with him. My wall was in the street before him. Yeah, he okay. got the idea but, for um, you. <laughs> he did. He did. Let's hope he doesn't get the poisonous gas idea. Yeah, well. um, but yeah, so that was it. So I've got these soldiers that were in this war, this technology war, mm. and they were bombed by their own government. But instead of dying, they wake up 100 years in the future and they're genetically modified. And... Um, and they're just trying to live. For them, they only went to sleep three years ago, you know? Um, and so it's a hundred years has passed, their family's gone, their friends have gone, everything's gone. And they're in a completely new world that's, that's there's no America anymore, it's territories. And instead of governments ruling the place, it's companies, it's all about profit. Yeah. So yeah, I was just entertaining myself. If Nalini Singh had written faster, there would be no red zone. <laughs> <laughs> and I should just put in here that uh, I have interviewed Nalini Singh. She's a, a spectacular. And I met her in uh, RWNZ last year when I came over to the conference, which was great. And uh, yeah, so yeah, if, you, if anyone watching or listening does want to look at that in, um, episode, it is on my website. So go back and have a look. She's, she's so generous too with her time. She's oh, so she's lovely. lovely. Yeah, absolutely. She is really lovely. And so talented. You read her books and you just want to cry. Yeah. You know, I get, oh, she has such a way with words. Yeah. Oh, there's not many writers I read and I'm just so in awe of and really jealous of. And mm. she's one of them. Oh, that's so cool. So, um, yeah, yeah you, I might you, go you... miss it on her, kidnap her, put her somewhere and make her write this for me. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> the lady, if you're watching, that was a joke. <laughs> kind of maybe <laughs> oh lovely so now that you've done this traditional deal did you get this great readership that you were after and everything <laughs> no 
<laughs> because I'm an idiot. Because I didn't do the traditional deal with romantic comedy, which I have 17 books of romantic comedy. I did it with something new and weird. So no, this has not worked out well for me. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably really bugging up your Amazon algorithms, really. <laughs> it's bugging up everything. Absolutely everything. You know, I just, and my readers are all just like, what is this? So I've been saying to them, because I have another series, Benson Security, which is kind of action, adventure, romantic suspense thing. And I said, it's like Benson Security only 100 years in the future. Mm-hmm. And they're like, yeah, why are you doing that? <laughs> Get back to the romantic comedy. We need escapism. I don't know why I'm doing it. I don't know. Oh well. Too you much can to learn. Yeah, that's it. You'll you'll learn. And uh, so, do you think you'll go chasing another um, traditional contract in the future? Yes, but um, yeah, I've got something in the works, um, which I'm not going to talk about because you know what, I might jinx it. Yep. Yep. No, but that, um, that's yeah, fine. that's more romantic comedy. So. Yeah. We'll awesome. see how that goes. Yeah, yeah, cool. Excellent. So what are you working on at the moment? Can you give us um, any hints? Or... Well, I've just finished the edits for the second Red Zone book. Yeah, yeah. yeah that yeah. took a long, long time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, but my 14-year-old's just read it because she really wanted the second in the series before it anybody else and she said it was okay so hey high praise um then i'm writing the third in my sinclair sister series which is obviously about sisters Mm -hmm. and that's only a trilogy so this is the last book in the trilogy but um yeah but that might surprise my readers because i finished my invitari series uh, which was seven books but in the third in the sinclair sister book i'm taking her to Invertari, so they kind of get a bonus Invertari book out of this. Ooh. So, I if any of them are watching this, surprise! <laughs> <laughs> when you thought it was over, exactly. oh, fantastic. And um, you and I, we just realised are both going to be at Romance Writers of America in New York in like five weeks' time. It's sneaking up. Yes. <laughs> really looking forward to it. I'm wondering if I can lose like 20 stone in five weeks. I'm not sure it's possible. <laughs> <laughs> I'm wondering if it's going to be like the other conferences where you gain about a kilo a day. <laughs> oh, no, you're too busy running between things. You just spend your whole time running between different seminars. Yeah. yeah. And you're involved yeah. quite a lot with Romance Writers of New Zealand as well. Are you going to be able to work that conference in as well this year? Yep, I'm definitely going. I'm on the committee. I've been doing a little bit of help with this year's conference. Uh, not as much as everybody else. They are awesome. That, that, oh, the Canterbury team, the Christchurch team, whatever you want to call them, they are just amazing. They, I'm telling you, this year's conference in New Zealand is going to be the best ever. Yeah. And I'm not just saying that because like, I have a stake in it. You know, The things they've got organised are just going to be awesome. Oh, that's cool. Oh, yeah, I, I know, like it. Yeah, I was there last year and I've, I've said every second year I'm definitely going back to New Zealand because they can do a yeah. conference so well. And I love how small and, yeah. and intimate yeah. it is. So um, that's brilliant. I'm oh, very it's going to be fabulous. You'll be, yeah, you'll have to post lots yeah. of photos and you know, Nalini will be there. So yeah. if anyone wants to go meet her, go to that. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no, I mean, we're going, to have, um, we're going to have a barn dance and the awards dinner is going to be slightly different. The food is going to be like a million times better than every conference that we've ever been to. It's just, we're spending a lot on priorities. Um, <laughs> so. but, yeah, it's, I, I'm really looking forward to it. And plus my birthday is on the Thursday. So I intend to hijack whoever's there and make them celebrate with me. <laughs> Sounds like a good idea. <laughs> oh, fantastic. Well, where can we find you online and keep up with everything that you're doing? Um, you can have a look on my website. It's just JanetElizabethHenderson.com. There you go. And you don't have That's one it. of these crazy Gaelic names that I'd have to try and pronounce, which no, is great. <laughs> no, just Henderson. Henderson. <laughs> Pretty average. <laughs> Excellent. Well, thank you so much for chatting to me today, Janet. That was great. Thank you, Sarah. It was lovely that you asked me and it's been fun. Thank you. Thanks for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed the show. 
jump onto my website, sarahwilliamsauthor.com, and join my mailing list to receive a free preview of my books and lots of other inspiration. If you like the show and want it to continue, you can become a sponsor for just a couple of dollars a month. Go to patreon.com forward slash Sarah Williams Author. And remember to follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel and leave a review of the podcast. I'll be back next week with another loved up episode. Bye.